What's up guys, this is Damien J, and this is Bourbon, Bass, and Barbells. On today's episode, we're gonna be doing a flight of Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. I'm gonna be going through the, what is it? The B520, the C920, the A121, and the B521. up nice so you can see them all right guys so um elijah craig uh named after reverend elijah craig uh 1789 i guess heaven hill bought the distillery and decided to call him the father of all bourbon i guess he was the first one to char a barrel throw it in there and call it a day um it does say it on every bottle the 1789 uh the barrel proofs themselves First released March 2013. Um, they are supposed to wildly vary from each. Uh, the identifier code, so like I mentioned, the first one, the C520, uh, or excuse me, the B520, it goes A, B, and C every year for every release. So A being the first, B, and so on. And then they actually put the date in them. So you get the um, A121, so A, first one, uh, one being January, and then 21 being 2021. So and putting out roughly three a year. Uh, the ones from last year, uh, the one that was readily available here in Colorado was the B520. Uh, that's the one I'll be sipping first. Uh, the C920, I, I just never got a hold of out here. It was impossible to find. So I got it in a very tater way. <laughs> I went ahead and went to like Nestor Liquors online and, and spent $130. Uh, I did use the $10 coupon. $130 to get that and then a bottle of like a regular Elijah Craig and a bottle of regular Larceny, which I'll probably promptly give away because I have those bottles already. Maybe I'll throw them in the bunker. It's not like I don't have enough here, there, and then upstairs, but it is what it is. So I'm going to start off with the first one. Again, I think uh, the proof on this is insanely high. Let me double check the proof here. So um, let me make sure I'm looking at the right one. Yeah, B520. Uh, was released May 2020. It is a 12 year, they're all 12 year uh, bourbons. The mash bill is 78% corn, 12% uh, malted barley, 10% rye. And they run for about $65. Uh, if you find one for that much, you let me know. Uh, in Colorado, I haven't seen it for cheaper than $69.99. Um, I've seen them up to $99.99 out here, so. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive in with this first one. Again, uh, hopefully there'll be some great outtakes here because I'm not used to drinking this early, but this is the only way I'm gonna get the show done. So here we go. So me and my wife have a saying, uh, VOC, uh, vanilla, oak, cherry, and or caramel. And I'm getting lots of cherry, lots of caramel. smells like graham cracker so yes first things first it does hit like a hammer and it's a little early for this Ooh, that big uh, Kentucky hug as they call it I, I, I gotta say every time I've had this thing it's it's damn near perfect um, just tons of brown sugar obviously the VOC a little bit of a peppery Kind of finish to it um it's still one of my favorites i uh i bought a bunch of bottles of these when i had a chance and it's it's just wonderful it's damn near perfect uh just very sweet caramel brown sugar a um, little bit of a, a spicy like peppery finish towards the end just a just a long lasting uh almost heat to it um, I'm starting to get more of that marshmallow as it kind of expires and goes away. Such such a great pour. Ooh, let's move into the next one. Let me get a little water here. It's too early in the morning. Next up is the C920. Pull up any weird stats this might have. Big thing here, 132.8 proof. Uh, again, another 12 year, 78% corn, 12% malted barley, 10% rye. Um, straight from the website here. Mm. 
You know what's funny? After having this one, after having this one, it's it's less of the VOC, and it's almost like a citrusy, sweet. I can't place it. Jam, like an orange jam. I don't know. <laughs> Sunkissed, like orange sunkissed, but without the carbonation. Does that make sense? All right. This one's a, a lot of the same. Um, a little bit more cherry. I'm getting like a. It's like a earthiness, like leather, maybe like a, a, a light touch of uh, tobacco there. Just like really light, like um, almost chomping on the end of a, a cigar. A lot of that on the finish as well. A lot of like that earthy, dryish. It's not quite dry though. It's a very long finish. Like I haven't had my next sip yet. And now I'm getting more of that. Uh, Cookie-ish, cookie dough kind of, um, you know, the, the powdery cookie dough feeling you get off of the edge there. So a lot more, uh, oh, a lot more medicinal uh, cherry at the front. It almost, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like cough syrup. <laughs> I know people aren't gonna like that, but it's not in a bad way. Like I don't know, when I was a kid, I didn't, I didn't hate cough syrup. See, now I'm not getting the orange anymore. I'm getting more of the brown sugar. There's always oak. I mean, saying oak is an understatement. Like they, they finish them in oak bar barrels. Of course, of course there's oak. All right. I'm still leaning towards the, B, the B520 here. The C920 is great, but I don't know. All right. This is the A121. Uh, I think that, was this the lowest one? I can't remember. Uh, the proof is 123.6. Uh, same mash bill, 78% corn, 12% uh, malted barley, 10% rye, and ooh, let's grab the wrong one. Let's see what we get here. See, it's 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 very strange. You go from these very high proofs, you know, it's a 127, a 130-ish. Uh, you you dial it back to the 123, and then it just smells so thin. You know. <laughs> So much brown sugar at the top. Just a inordinate. Ooh, it's like a a lot of a lot of tobacco, and it's it's kind of drying towards the end of this one. So this this a this a one twenty one, it has like this really great start, and then it kind of finishes in a in a dry. Um, almost like a dry wine, like vermouth kind of way. The smell almost seems like it's improving. Typical of uh, Elijah Craig's, almost, it, it seems like everything that's like in the barrel proof and the toasted barrel is very much a, like a, um, what is it? Like a schmore, uh, but like elements of schmores. And then like you start doing them back to back and then you're just, I feel like I'm camping right now. I feel like there should be a fire and I should be sitting in front of it just because it's a lot of, and I don't know if it's just because I'm going from one to the next to the next, but a very like going back and forth, like one is like graham cracker, one's got chocolate, one's got marshmallow. And it's like, it's almost confusing when you go through them. Because now I'm getting like graham cracker, little bit of that that marshmallow dust that's on there and it's you know when i when i drink these i i rarely think of the rye content but i don't know if it's the lower proof that really makes that rye flavor kind of like push up to the forefront so let's move on to the last one it's the most recent release this is the 521 so may 2021 i got a little dot on me now uh, 118 proof. So this this apparently is the lowest proof one that they've made. Um, same mash bill again. 78 corn, 12 barley, 10% uh, rye. And let's go to the nose. <sighs> it smells like nothing now. <laughs> this progression is interesting because it's just kind of gone from um, these stronger two into almost a nothingness where you you barely smell anything. And it's, it's, it's interesting. There's a, I like to call it the young smell. 
Um, I think some people call it like that dusty smell, but to me it's it's it smells younger. It smells like it's not a 12 year. And I don't know if that's just me going left to right, so we're gonna go right to left a little later. But the the nose is very, very light. I can still smell all of the VOC. Lots of like a cookie-ish, cracker-ish, like the graham cracker again, going back to the same thing. But there is the brown sugar there. I'm getting a lot of that again. And it's more caramel, caramel, whichever one, whichever camp you're in, than cherry on this. Oh. So I feel like, ooh. I feel like what hits you first is is a lot of oak. So the BOC is very much in effect. Very light brown sugar. You know, taking a sip back to back, the brown sugar comes out a little bit more. Um, it's it's It feels like there's a lot of oak in this. I don't know if when you lower the proof in these, if maybe it raises up uh, the awareness of the oak. You know, a lot of people say this one finished, finishes dry. I've, I've heard Jason C, Mash and Drum, and a few others say that this finishes really dry. I, I feel like the A121 almost finishes a little drier. And it's it's funny, because between these two, I was more into the A121. But now this one is is changed. It's It almost seems a little bit better. And this one's been getting a lot of bad press. Very long um, heat that stays on there. And the more I smell it, I don't know if the smell is, is helping my taste buds here, but I'm pulling more sugar on my tongue. So every time I get a little whiff, I can actually taste more on my tongue. It's probably science. Somebody's yelling science at the screen right now. So it, uh, honestly, I don't know if it's just because my senses are dulling out as we go, it, it almost has the best nose now. Maybe I'm just really sticking my face in here. All right, one more sip. I feel like the nose got better, but then the first taste was just like more and more of that barrel char, more and more of that oak. And it just kind of really kind of punches you. I'm not getting that dryness that everybody says. I feel like I got a lot more dryness off of the five, 521. I don't know. I, it's it's a lot better than it was. Like just going from left to right, I feel like first place is that 520, uh, the B520. Um, second place is probably the B521. Is how I'm feeling right now. Just going from left to right. Um, the third place being that 920, and now you know one of my favorites that I thought was one of my favorites is, is it actually moved to fourth. So uh, we'll take a little break here. Drink some water. So, um, update on what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I'm um, doing these drinks this way right now. Um, just kind of, I know which ones are which. Uh, I'm going to do a blind this weekend. Um, of the same ones, I'm actually going to throw in two other barrel proofs. I think I'm going to throw in the Stag Batch 15 and a uh, Jack Daniels uh, single barrel barrel proof um, that I enjoy quite a bit. And I'm going to blind them mix them up in here. I decided to do the show in two different, two different segments. Um, didn't plan on doing the show in the morning, first of all, because drinking in, but drinking before noon is absolutely insane to me. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> here we are drinking. I just realized I didn't turn the light on, but yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully you can see me fine enough. And um, I decided that doing this left to right and then right to left and then doing it again with two additional ones um, would probably be an insane person's thing. So <laughs> an insane person's thought. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and split it up. So um, I'm doing this one today. Hopefully Saturday I'll be able to do the other one sometime and then go, you know, blinded all the way through. Uh, but that's what I got in store for you there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of mention about the specifically the A121 and the B521, is that a lot of people are saying that Elijah Craig is possibly watering these down a little bit. Um, 
barrel proof typically means that whatever goes in is what comes out. Um, but it also means that they do add water because if you put something into a barrel uh, and the angel share, you know, pulls a little bit off of there, um, what you end up is with a stronger batch and then you actually water it down to get it back to what it was when it went into the barrel. Actually, no, that's foolproof now that I think about it. So barrel proof, it just goes in and comes out. So I don't know if they're breaking the rules. I don't know if they're breaking the rules. Um, you know, this last one, it does smell like it's watered down. Um, my other thing that I would say to most people who like, oh, it's not the same. It's like, well, it's because you're comparing it to previous Elijah Craig barrel, barrel proofs. And quite frankly, those are gone. Like you're not going to get them again. Hopefully you stocked up on the ones that you liked and you have a few extra bottles, but it's a finite supply. Um, so I don't know if they would do that, you know, and at the same time, it's like, when you have something like this, why are you comparing it to the ones from before? Bourbon, to me, the coolest part about it is that it's a different experience every time you have it. Um, even right now, you know, my favorites aren't winning right now. <laughs> uh, my favorites aren't winning because my favorite is the the C, uh, excuse me, the B520. And like right now I'm really into the A121 and who knows when I go back the other way, you know, taste is subjective. But um, I think when people are placing something like the B, you know, the B521 and they're saying, hey, it looks like they're watering this down. You know, it's not as good as the others. Stop comparing it to the others, first of all. Just take it as its own thing, uh, says the guy who's doing a blind. Or not even a blind, but a flight. Uh, <laughs> and then kind of decide from there. But um, I don't know. We're, we're going to see. We're going to go back through it and see what we get. So uh, again, this is the straight from the site. This is the B521. Um, it's 118.2 proof. And then the mash bill 78 on the corn, 12 on the barley, and 10% on the rye. Huh. So now, tons of brown sugar. Now it's tons of heat. Tons of heat, tons of, uh, mm. what is it? It's tons of oak this time. Tons of oak, tons of black pepper. Interesting. The sweetness was on the nose this time, not on the palate. Okay, hold on. I'm starting to get a, a little more sweet on the finish. So it's got, it's still got that nice, almost, it's very viscous, this oily, This oily, sweet, kind of caramel finish. It did, and it stays there. It kind of just sits on the tongue. Um, kind of like how you, you'll have a Rolo, and you eat the Rolo, and then you kind of get that chewy, you know, caramel that's left over, and then you're sitting there at your computer desk. <laughs> computer desk? You're sitting there at your work desk, and uh, you're just like, oh, I could go for another Rolo. We have Rolos at my work. That's why I'm, I'm leaning into this. But that's that's what I'm catching. One more. See, now it's sweet, oak, baking spice. A little tobacco on the finish. Is that tobacco or is it leather? It's a little both. Oh. Jesus Christ, what time? It's 10 o'clock, guys. 10 o'clock. I am five drinks into an eight drink show. Luckily, I'm not finishing these. Oh, now. Okay, I didn't even pull up the info. Let's see. Oh, it's so sweet. So sweet this time. All right, so this is back to the A121. Using my cheat sheet here. Uh, 123.6. Same mash bill, 78, 12, 10, uh, corn, barley, rye. So much more sugar at the top now. <laughs> it's just, I don't know if they're opening up. Oh, I think I said this the last time. It's, it's a really, it's a really big punch in the face with the oak. 
I'm, t I'm telling you, this one is the drier of the two. I'm almost positive. A121. Okay, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the bottle making sure I it's so dry. Make it so dry for you. It's so dry. Oof. All right, hold on. And it goes away so quickly. Yeah, it's it's a it's a lot of oak in the front. You know what? It, it's crazy because I, I really enjoyed this one. And now it's just so much oak in the front. Ugh. And then it's 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 oak and pepper. Like I almost want to sneeze. It's just a ton of oak. A lot of pepper. Oh. All right, let's, let's take a second and see if this one finishes. I mean, whenever you breathe in, you get mint. I think that's just your body cooling itself. It's it's really dry, like it's it's super dry. It's like you you put your tongue on wood and then that's awful. <laughs> that's awful. You, you take it off and it's just like uh, like almost cotton mouth like. Mm. All right, one more. I, was, I wasn't supposed to do another, but here we go. Yeah, I, it's just a lot of, it's a lot of oak. It's a lot of leather. It's a lot of dryness. And that's, that's the palette. The pepper, not so much this time. The finish. I'm telling you, it, it tastes like you were chewing on like a, a popsicle stick too long and you pulled the popsicle pop popsicle you pulled the popsicle stick out and it's just like this wood taste just in your mouth it it i don't know it's kind of off-putting actually all right we're back to the 132.8 proof Oof. am i gonna make it through the morning guys i already feel the, the laziness here in the left. <laughs> All right. Mm. Oh. VOC. Ah, thank you, cherries. Saving the day after that last one. Mm. Oh yeah, this is the jammy. Mm. Again, I'm pretty sure I said this the first way through. A lot of like that citrus sweet jam. Jam? Jam! Oof. <laughs> jam! Nah, can't do it. Let's let's fucking pass. Mm. It's it's really sweet. It tastes like a a, a sugary uh, jam spread, you know. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, somebody's screaming at the screen. I don't care. Um it's like a, it's like an orange jam. Again with the oak. Just um, it's not as big of a punch of a punch in the mouth as the A121 is with the oak, but it's pronounced, man. It's like that oak just jumps out and, and socks you in the chin. And the proof, Jesus, 132.8. That might be it. Might be more of the proof than anything else. As we're moving from the lows, bumping straight into highs, because this. It's literally like a 10 proof jump. All right, let's see if I'm acclimated. It's too early for this. So now, cherry for sure. A cinnamon uh, allspice kind of finish here. Definitely, definitely some, uh, it's like a light pepper. Um, if you were to separate the whites from the blacks, it would probably be more the white. Leathery. Again, a very cookie doughish kind of the powder. Like powdery, cookie doughish kind of, you know. I don't know. Scent to it. Like you, you, you mix up the cookie dough and then you put it in the fridge and you let it sit for a while and then you pull it out. You first open the, the, the saran wrap off the top and you get that very doughy, sweet goodness though. That oak, 
just hold again, just right. Oof, it's a lot. Like the oak is just a lot. I don't know if it's just building up as we go, but goodness gracious. Oof. All right, let's get a let's get a sippy poo. Oh, I gotta pull it up, right? All right. So last one is 127.2 proof. I think you're getting sick of me announcing the mash bill, but it's 78, 12, 10. Corn, barley, rye. Oh, that's really good. Maybe my left nostril is jammed today. Marmalade. That's what the fuck you call it. Oh, should I say that on the show? Not this one, the other one I remembered. I don't know why, but I don't know. VOC. Tons of like sweet caramel. Tons of brown sugar. I, I feel like I'm gonna say like VOC. I'm gonna say brown sugar, and then there's gonna be like these slight like variations all the way through because they're pretty, let's face it. Even though the proof is wildly different, even though the the initial kicks and the starters are there, I feel like they are pretty consistent of dialing in this very camping experience of sitting in front of the fire making s'mores. S'mores? Is it s'mores or s'mores? I like to say s'mores. I feel like they've dialed in that experience really, really, really well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I don't get the... I don't get the oak uppercut. Mm. I don't know if it's because I'm finishing with it. I'm back to page one with this guy. I, I think this is the winner. Mm. Maybe I just sat with it too long. Brown sugar, cherry. Oof. Oh, it's so, it's just so sweet. It's 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 like having a treat. I'm glad we went back and forth. Um, I would say this is definitely the winner. Um, B520 is the winner. Uh, strangely enough, I, I think I may push these to the side. Um, let me push this one off. And let's try to figure out who second place is. This is just me trying to fucking get hammered in the morning, right? Hammered? And one more. All right, don't do it. Don't do it. All right, let's put it, let's put it in front of its dad. You sit there. All right, well, let's get back down to the other three. Let me get a big drink of water here. Oh, I have to pause the show. All right, back to it. We moved away the winner, the clear winner, which was the B520. Um, I'm moving into the C920. It's a shame, too, that I had to spend an, a tater prices on this damn bottle to get it, just to find out that it might lose to the A121. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Let's pull up the proof. This is the highest proof one that I have in this in this flight, by the way. See now, I'm getting a lot more sweet. Oh, let's see. I'm getting a lot more sweet, a lot more cherry. I'm like, cherry, cherry. Not so much medicinal, just sweet cherries in the bowl, bro. Was this the oaky one? I'm getting a lot of oak again, but I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of brown sugar this time around. It's not quite a punch in the face with the oak, but it's it's ever present. Present? <laughs> it's ever present. It's too early. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be shit faced by the time I walk out of this room. This is I'm just to back it up. Thank goodness I didn't do a blind after this. I shouldn't even be doing second place right now, but it's that close. You can tell it's the strongest of the bunch. I don't know. It's a lot of brown sugar on the palate. It's, it's a little drying. It's not overwhelmingly drying this time. Nice long finish, though. Very just almost the caramel turns in again the Rolo, but like dipping more into that dark chocolate. I know people hate it when you smack. 
I don't know. Now I'm going back through it. I'm like, this is this is winning. All right, let's get a little water. I might. Oof. Is that right? A <laughs> Jesus. A one twenty one. This is our one hundred twenty three point <clears throat> six to the head. It's so wildly. Where is it? So this is one twenty three. The other one is 132. It's a crazily obvious drop in the smell. Now that's different. All right. There's something at the head of that that's different than, you get this initial burst of something and then it kind of rolls into a um, black pepper. But there's something before that Let's 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 concentrate on the finish for a second. <laughs> Ten fifteen. And my my stomach is making all the noises. If the mic is picking that up, it's gonna be so dope. The finish is really short. It's like a high, and then just like a drop. It's it's camping. It's really uneventful. <laughs> It's just, you get this, this burst of brown sugar. You get a little chocolatey Rolo. Um, I wish I could say there's something else. It's, it's like the, not the spicy part of the cinnamon, but when you think of cinnamon in almost like big red and uh, you've chewed up a piece of big red all the sugars out of it and you just kind of got the gum left and you, you get like the, you bite down real hard and you get that reminiscent flavor of spice, of cinnamon spice. It's, it's a lot of that. All right, let's get in the last one. Ooh. B521, it's the May release, the most recent, the one that everybody's been poo-pooing on. So light, it's, you can tell this is the lowest proof they've ever had. It is very, very light. And I know what's gonna happen because this happened the first time through. It's gonna smell light. I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna make my little stupid um, observations. I feel like George Bush, long pause, observations. And you guys are gonna be like, yeah, dude, it's the second sip. All right. It smells like a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. It tastes like nothing now. <sighs> I think this is what happened the last time. We went left to right. We went right to left, right to left. This thing picked up again. So it's, it's almost like a lull. You taste it. You kind of get the going and then it, it it finishes like with an intensity it kind of like builds it's a slow build let the beat build oh base portion oh. i mentioned weightlifting earlier so barbell portion now okay this is exactly what i talked about before now the voc is coming out very brown sugar Again, that's, um, I feel like all of them have it, that Rolo caramel, but the spice kind of makes it change a little. You know what? I stand by it. This thing grows on you. I, I don't know if it's just my limited palate. Um, I'm not a Jason C. I'm not a Fred Minnick, uh, bourbon junkies. I'm not like those guys. I'm just a regular dude who really loves bourbon. People have been poo-pooing on this thing. It's second place in this group, so it puts it third overall, but um, I I think, and this is just me, that first sip throws you, you acclimate, you get back into it. This is actually fantastic. Um, by no means is it first place. 
I think this goes toe to toe with a lot of other barrel proofs that come out. I guess we're gonna find out this weekend when I do um, these four again and then uh, add two because I love Stag Junior. I, I love batch 15, I can't even explain it. I've been through two bottles already. Um, I have two bottles left, unfortunately. This guy and upstairs, neither of them are open. I think I have a flask that still has like some, some Stag Junior in it. But um, if I'm gonna go, go through it, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's going to be, and I'm gonna arrange them over here so I can remember. It's gonna be the B520, um, the C920, no, we need, oh, they're in order, aren't they? No, but the B521. So that's the order I'm gonna put them in, guys. I think as it is right here, right now, um, we got our B520, we got our C920, we get our B521, and we got that A121. That's where I'm putting them right now. I think that's the perfect order for them. It's, it's upsetting that the C920 was so good. I was actually kind of hoping that it was overrated, mostly because I don't have another bottle and I don't wanna pay tater prices for it. I'm hoping in my travels this summer, I get lucky and I find a bottle of it because I will definitely fucking pick it up if I see it again. Um, the A121 is kind of a shame because I think I have two backups. I actually think I have two backups of that guy and it's fourth place. <sighs> kind of circling back to where we were in the beginning, I really feel as though if you're looking for a barrel proof, these were all great. It's really hard to pick the best of the best because I feel like people watch these videos and they go, oh, I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip A121 if I see it because uh, so-and-so said it wasn't, it wasn't up to par with the rest of the barrel proofs. Here's the thing. It may not be on par, excuse me, it may not be on par with the rest of the barrel proofs, but it's still an Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's still a 12 year bourbon. It's still pretty amazing compared to whatever else is out. I think at the price, I heard they raised their prices this year. It's typically $65. There's some people are saying that they've raised it up to $69.99. I don't know. I live in Colorado. The prices are shit no matter where I go. No matter who it is, no matter what it is. It is dog shit prices, but I would say if you get a chance to get one of these, don't pass it up. If you've never had it, don't pass it up. Don't watch Fred Minnick and say, oh, he said it was trash, I'm not gonna have it. Do it for yourself, just try it. I, I promise you this, for a barrel proof, you're getting your money's worth. Um, it will be an experience. At least you can say you had it. I mean, the list goes on and on, I really feel like you should never let one of these bottles go off the shelf. Buffalo Trace is all the rage, good for them. Heaven Hill products, kind of hit and miss. People are saying they're watering it down. I say if you see a barrel proof on the shelf, pick it up, give it a try. Um, not so big on their larcenies yet, but quite honestly, I've only had one. So, so far, uh, again, and we'll go ahead and end it for now and we'll pick up this weekend when I do the comparison against the Jack Daniels and the Stag, but B520, C920, B521, A121. Stag Junior Batch 15. Mm, nice pop. Oh, there you go. Bam. So you know it's real. I'm going to mix up all these glasses real quick. Uh, they're all labeled on the bottom one through six. So we'll start fucking moving these guys around. 
a little bit here, a little bit there. I don't know. I don't know. Just have my wife come down and do it one more time. Uh, put this one here, and I'll put this one here. All right. Just to kind of prove I did it. All right, guys. So day two, um, we are doing a barrel-proof flight today. Um, same ones that I did yesterday, but I included a couple of wild cards. So I have the Elijah Craig uh, A121, uh, the Elijah Craig uh, A521, and then last year's releases, the B520 and the C920. Uh, in addition to that, I did a fresh crack today of the Stag Junior, uh, batch 15, the 65.55 or the 131.1 proof as well as our Jack Daniels Barrel Proof, which is a fantastic buy. This one was bottled on 111.21, and it's got a proof of 129.6. So I added those in as a wild card. We're gonna find out which one I like the best. Little mini battle of the barrel proofs. I was going to do this yesterday, and I thought better of it because I was pretty hammered. So today, I have the smaller Glen Cairn glasses. Hopefully, we get um, you know a few tops here, and we're able to figure out which one's which. So we'll find out as we go. And to me, Stag Junior and um, the Jack Daniels, the Jack Daniels barrel proof, they're very distinct to me. Uh, it's kind of funny, I, th I think the Jack Daniels has a cola flavor to it, which is kind of funny, Jack and Coke. And then Stag, um, I feel like just a lot more cherries, a lot more medicinal cherries. So we'll see how this turns out. I've never done a blind before without my wife. Um, she has the much better palate than me. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't want to do the show. That's how life is. So here we go. Uh, we're going to go from left to right. I'm like checking my Facebook while we're talking here. I don't need to be doing that. And uh, let's get it. Let's find out. Huh. See, now I got, I got that cola thought in my head. A lot of cherry. Typical VOC. Huh. So, oof. I got to tell you. I don't know if it's just me with the anticipation, but already it tastes different than the Elijah Craig's. Um, a lot of, of cherry. Um, it's very sweet, like very, very sweet. The nose is just full of dark fruits. You know, there's a, there's a oaky presence here now on this second drink, which kind of makes me lean towards the Elijah Craig's, but um, this is this is solid pour. Don't know what it is. Uh, tastes fantastic. All right, second pour. Hit the nose. Mmm, very light. I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the lower proof releases of the Elijah Craig. Yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I think I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of the Elijah Craig's. I keep wanting to turn it towards me and see what it is. A lot of oak, very tanniny. Um, a lot of pepper. Uh, it seems like a lot of white pepper, honestly. Ooh, it's got a long lasting hot, just kind of burn, that Kentucky hug. Mm. Second drink and smell. So, a lot more of the kind of graham, cra graham crackery. Some good cherry scent in there too. You know, the typical, again, VOC. Now that one was strong. Again, very, uh, very oaky. Lots of tannins, lots of pepper, lots of pepper on this one. That's number two. Neither of these have wowed me so far. So I don't know if I'm just burnt out from yesterday, but they're kind of uneventful so far. Here's pour number three. Ooh, <laughs> so the nose makes me think this is the Jack Daniels. <laughs> mm, it's It's got the caramel, it's got cola. I could be wrong, I'm, I'm not great at this. 
That has got to be. This has got to be the Jack Daniels. The Jack Daniels has like a cola. It has, to me, a very like uh, banana runts kind of taste. Lots of banana on the nose, actually. I, I will I will bet my firstborn child. <laughs> why would why did I give it the slow wink? The sexy wink. I gave it the sexy wink. I will bet almost anything that this is the uh, this is the Jack Daniels. Yeah, lots of cola. I'm almost I'm almost positive. Again, I'm not good at this, so we'll see. That one's winning right now, though, by far. I, so far, I would say the third one and the first one, and that second one was just kind of meh. All right, drink number four. Another light one. So it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm thinking about the first one. I don't know if the burn was there just because it was a higher proof, but I'm smelling this one. And this one's kind of uneventful too. A lot more cherry on this one. It's very understated. A little bit of that like cocoa dust. Chocolatey. So this one's really good. Um, it almost has me feeling like it's the, it's, it's one of the, I've said this again, I've done it already, but it's either the A121 or the B521. Because it's kind of understated. It doesn't feel like it's high proof. It's, it's really sweet. Just a lot of brown sugar. Like a lot. The finish is, is warming. It's kind of in here. It's not like back of the throat warming. It's definitely deep in the chest. This one's pretty tasty. I, th I think I'm going to move this one to second place. So we'll move these two down. Boop. Sucks to suck. All right, pour number five. I'm just gonna leave the cap off. Oof. Ooh. Some grape in here. When I think grape, I think Stag Jr. That one is just sweet, crisp. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, I don't think it's the Stag Junior. It's just not hot enough. And uh, again, this is another one of those ones where it's not quite hot. I'm getting a slow warming in my chest. Um, you know, there's a touch of cinnamon there, and that's what's making me think it's the Stag Junior. That's a lot of cherry. It's a lot of cherry. I'm getting some cinnamon. I'm, I'm guessing it is. I'm not sure if it's hot enough, and I don't know if, you know, five barrel proofs in, I can even tell the difference anymore. I think I'm acclimated at this point. Right, last one. Again, a lot of oak on this one. Typical BOC, but there's a lot more oak, I feel like, than some of the other ones. Oh! Hello. That's a lot of oak, dude. That is so much oak. It's Almost, it's it's borderline off-putting. Excuse my air conditioner turning on. Whew. That's a lot of oak. Which one was the really oaky one? I'm feeling like it was... It's the 121 or the 521. Really oaky. But it tastes hot. Just so much oak. So now we're gonna move uh, back right to left. It looks like uh, the third one's in first place. Um, the fourth one is in second. The first one is in third, and the second one is in fourth. And then followed by five and six or five and six. So we're gonna go right to left this time, see if I find somebody that I like a little better. Now I'm getting tobacco. A lot of tobacco. I think it was a lot of oak before, now it's tobacco, so that's that's interesting. This is very dry. Um, it's very dry, very drying. Very, very, um, it's more tanniny than oaky. 
It's kind of like a thing I said it yesterday, the popsicle stick thing. I don't even know if it's the same one. It's kind of like that, like you've been sucking on a piece of fucking wood for whatever reason. Use that sound bite however you feel fit. <clears throat> Oof, it is, it's got a long afterburn though, man. It's, it's almost off-putting how much it burns in the center. I'm not sure it's last, but it's, it's again, I, I said this about barrel proofs, you know, especially with the Elijah Craig's, it's tough because like the Elijah Craig's, stop comparing them to the other Elijah Craig's. Like they're all different for a reason. Um, now I, I would say this, if they keep being in this 120 range, like all of a sudden, like I don't feel like there's a huge jump where you end up with these. So it, it could be possible that Elijah Craig is watering these things down. I'm not saying that for sure. You know, if you come off of 230 proof releases and then, you know, drop 120 ones back to back, it's a little suspect. But uh, the track record with barrel proofs is, is usually one a year isn't very good. So it would stand to, it would stand to reason that you could have two releases back to back that were kind of shitty proofed. But we'll see. You know, September's around the corner, we'll find out. All right, going to glass five. Oh, one of my unrated glasses. Again, just kind of uneventful. Um, disappears off the palette really quickly. Do get the warmth of the proof in my chest. It tastes, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's not the, it's one of the Elijah Craig's uh, because it does taste young. Um, I don't know if I'm getting a young scent. It is surprisingly underwhelming actually. Uh, and now it's it's tannins again. You know, I I said it earlier, I'm, I'm almost feeling like, I, but the, the proof feels higher on this number five. It's It's really tough. Like it, it tastes like nothing, but then like that burn makes me feel like it is. I'm tempted to say that these are both the 2021 releases, the five and the six. There's no way we know until we go. All right, ugh, Oof. let's get some water. All right, we're going to our second place pick, which is our fourth glass. <sighs> Cherry, grape. It's pretty damn tasty. A lot of cherry, a little bit of oak. Not a big burn though. So this is this is what's making it confusing because it's not a big burn. You want to assume that maybe it's the one of the the 121 or the 521 just because there's not a lot of burn. Now it's starting to heat up on the finish. Got to bring it out like a chocolate note. You know, and, and, I'm, and I can't pinpoint the stag, and I feel like every time I have the stag, there's a cinnamon that I get. I haven't caught a cinnamon in any of these. Again, I don't know if I'm just barrel proofed out. This one is, it, it's tasty though. Like I can't even lie to you. This, this guy is so tasty. It's a lot of brown sugar now. It's, it's pretty tasty. There's, I'm starting to get a little bit of oak on the finish kind of creeping in and then boom that that warmth that kind of starts from the center and moves its way up some of you are like Damien that's an ulcer might be let's go game face uh, I mean I know without a doubt this is the JD if I'm wrong I don't know. I don't know what I need to do. Uh, maybe we'll crowdsource an idea of what I should do. That's not too over the fucking top. But if this isn't the Jack Daniels, I don't know what is. There's cola. There's that brown sugar. It, the cola is overwhelming in it. It's got that sweet, like a cherry Coke. Oh. It tastes like cherry coke, or it smells like cherry coke. It tastes like, it tastes like cherry coke. 
It's amazing. I, you know, this is so underrated. They're hard to find, but I'm, I'm, I'm stating my whole reputation on this. Oh shit. Two episodes in, we're going for reputation points. Uh, the guy who doesn't is not a sommelier. The guy who was like a bartender for like two summers. This has got to be the JD. $60. I'm just going to go ahead and do the commercial for it. $60. You can't beat it. Um, every one that I've tried of this, and I've only tried two. And it's so wildly different from the other five. It's, it's insane. Cherry cola. Banana runts. Brown sugar. $60. Go get that shit. And if I'm wrong, I will tell you which one to get later. <laughs> All right, let's get the number two. Let me get some water. I did not see this going this way. I thought for sure I was going to pick the stag. But it's been so long since I've had it too, so. I think I have what I have left of, because I did the fresh crack today. Who knows, maybe it's a neck pour. I honestly do believe that's a thing. Um, but I'm really, I'm really kind of surprised. Like if this is one of these two that are down in five and six, I will be completely shocked. I really feel like it's four, but we'll see. You know, this one grew on me. This was in fourth. And I feel like this is, this is third place now. Um, it is lighter once again. Because every every time it's light, I automatically think 121, 521. But it's very clean. It's very crisp. It's kind of like biting into an apple and that kind of refreshing Granny Smith, like refreshing feel you feel after a Granny Smith apple. Like, <laughs> it's pretty legit. I always go for that second drink though because that's usually where I catch the tens. This thing's amazing. This thing's moved up into three. I'll put you in three. What was now, what was once three is now four. Oh, five and six are down in five and six. I figured it out while we've been sitting here talking. I'm gonna call them off, which ones they were. I'll turn on the other camera. I'll mix them again. We'll pull out the winners and we'll try to figure out who the, who the rest are. Ooh. I might even just eliminate five and six unless they're like hitters. But we'll see. <clears throat> All right, glass number one. Let's find out. They smell like nothing now. <laughs> I'm so uh, acclimated to the fucking barrel proofs that they don't even taste like they're high proof anymore. And I'm, I know I'm buzzed. <laughs> this is the watch Damien get drunk show. You know, <sighs> we might have to do a top four, bottom four. That is so oaky now that. I don't even, I don't even know. It's kind of so oaky that it's off-putting now. And I'm going to put that in the bottom tier. So, um, let me get one more sip of it. Let me clear my palate. Jeez, it's so warming afterwards. This is where the, bar this is where the barrel proofs really, like, dig into you. Oof. Just take a before and after picture. All right, last one. It, it smells really clean. Very, it, don't get me wrong, bourbon, that VOC is the shit. The vanilla, the oak, the cherry that you pull off of just about every single bourbon, sometimes caramel, every single one of them is just, oh, chef's kiss. Like the smell of any of these to me is, is amazing. Some are more oaky, it kind of, it can be off-putting, but the, the nose on this one, I will say this, the number one glass, the nose on it is oh, just amazing. And now I take the second sip and I'm like, it's tough. I think five and six stay. Number one is, is just a fucking anomaly at this point. It, it tastes so much better. So this is what I got. I got number three as number one. Um, I got number four as number two. I got number two as number three. I got number four as number four. And then five and six are five and six. Um, they're interchangeable, honestly, to me at this point. So let's go ahead and do an unveiling and see how that worked out. All right, number one. Oh 
Jesus Christ. I couldn't cheat if I tried. What number is that? Four. So the number four is the B521. Fair. The number two, oh boy, is number two. The number two is the C920. That came in third. All right, the number three, this better be Jack Daniels. Was that number six? Number six, all right. All right. Woo, all right. The number two I feel like is gonna be Stag Jr., but we'll see. <sighs> is one. Oh, it's the B520. Uh, oh no, oh no, five and six, wow. Um, I'm already a little embarrassed because I love Stag Jr. I'm not sure which one of these two it's going to be. My mind is a little fucking blown right now. <laughs> Yeesh. Number five is number five, which is the Stag Jr. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeesh. And the number six that leaves, that looks like, oh geez. Number three, which is the A121. I am completely shocked. Um, I don't even know what to say right now. So number one was that Jack Daniels. Number two uh, was this, the B520. The number three, was the C920 or B520. So let's start again. Number one, number one was the Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. Number two was the B520. Number three was the C920. Number four was the number four B521. Number five was Stag. And then number six was that A121. Wow, that's all I have to say is wow. Um, I was gonna do the top three, mix them up in a blind. I'm really kind of surprised that these uh, got knocked out of contention, so wow. Again, wow. I think yesterday my number one ended up being, I can't even remember. I might have to go back and watch the footage. Um, let me do that, let me, do, uh, let me watch the footage from yesterday and we'll wrap this guy up. All right, I reviewed the tape from yesterday. <laughs> this was the order that I had yesterday. B521, W-O-N, <laughs> and then second place was C920. Third place was the B521. Fourth place was the A121. Today, the winner was the Jack Daniels. Second place was the B520. Third place was the C920. Fourth place was the B521. Which is unheard of because that is exactly the order they were in. This was not scripted. I was expecting, uh, I was expecting Stag Jr. to come on top. I am that big of a fan. And I think the JD is so wildly different from these four. That's, it's, it's just kind of a breath of fresh air. I was not expecting Stag Jr. to kind of just blend in and disappear like it did. Um, I am completely shocked. So. I'm pretty impressed with my palette that I ended up with the same order and then we just kind of shoved in the two. So I'm pretty impressed that if you were to take out the JD and take out the Stag Jr., you still end up with B520, C920, B521, A121. But I was not expecting Stag Jr. to come in that damn low. My mind is blown right now. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. I'm still processing it. I guess 
the good news is, is that you can pick up Jack Daniels for a Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. You can pick this guy up for $60 easy. Every once in a while, you'll pick it up for 50. I picked up this particular bottle, I actually picked up for $50. Uh, my extra bottles uh, that I bought for myself and a friend, those were $59.99 each. What a great price. I am completely shocked and in awe by how amazing this did compared to the rest. Again, it's almost a bias because I know how different this tastes. So I don't know if because it was so different is the reason why it fared so well against these, but there's just something when I was a kid, we used to love going down to Sonic and getting a cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper. And there's something about this bottle that's just very cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper. It doesn't have the, the Dr. Pepper taste. It's more of a cola, which is kind of hilarious because again, Jack and Coke. But that's what I get from this bottle is a very just jack and coke vibe from it and it's a great proof it's a tasty pour i i can't say anything but good things about this bottle and i'm hoping that they're all consistent across the board just like this one because again i do have some other bottles like you know i bought a friend of mine one i think it's i think the two bottles that i have are both march releases um, and then again, I have those two 375 milliliter bottles that are most certainly, you know, 2019 and that's two years before, so they could be a different profile. But the thing about Jack Daniels that's so cool is that Jack Daniels follows the same like rules as bourbon, but they prefer to call themselves Tennessee whiskey. I'm, I'm gonna say it, it is clearly the winner here overall. Like Stag Jr. retail price is supposed to be 49, 50 bucks. Um, $60 is still a deal if you could find it. The Elijah Craig, $65. You're gonna be hard pressed to find Elijah Craig barrel proof for that price. You're gonna be hard, to, you're gonna be hard pressed to find Stag Jr at that price if i were to look them both up right now i can almost guarantee you that what you're gonna see is these crazy secondary prices like stag jr it can run anywhere from like 300 to 1200 depending on the batch elijah craig it's a little bit more down to earth um a lot of places like the 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 what was it the c920 that i got I bought the C920 for 130 bucks from Nestor Liquor. Um, completely a tater thing to do, but I was never gonna see that bottle and I needed it because I wanted to do this show right here with it. And it cost me $130, but I got that bottle. I got a regular bottle of Elijah Craig. I got a, I got a regular bottle of Larceny. So it kind of balanced out. It kind of felt a little bit better and I'm looking at this Jack Daniels, and trust me, it's not readily available. When this thing is on the shelf, it disappears, but I know where there are two bottles of it sitting right now, and I'm very tempted to go drive over there and just go ahead and buy those two bottles because they are just as rare to find. I never see them on the shelf. When I do, it's usually some mom and pop off the beaten path. Um, it's not a tater spot where everybody knows about it. It's a very... Uh, unique spots um, for those who, for those of you who follow uh, Bourbon Basin Barbells on Instagram, um, and it's probably not going to be there by the time this ep this episode airs. But there was an incident that happened there the other day when I went in, and that's the place. That is the place that I went to where that incident happened, and it's it's just an amazing kind of like hole in the wall where it's it's perfect for what it is it's off the beaten path one two it's definitely where 
everyone shops. So like everybody of every income class without being rude about it. Like if the more apt people are in to buy like Natty Ice and Fireball, the more apt they are to get really great releases. And this is one of those spots where it's just like, they might have a bottle kind of just hanging out on a shelf that you weren't expecting. They, they literally have an Evan Williams 2010 that's sitting on there that I wanted to get yesterday while I was there and I didn't get just because I don't have the 2010 Evan Williams. And like the Evan Williams single barrel releases are, they're pretty tasty. They're like a very consistent bourbon and it's nice to like, like I have the 2011, I have the 2012, I have the new release for this year, which is the 2013. I have an older 2007 bottle. Um, I was just gonna get the 2010 to just be like, you know, fill in the gaps. But again, because it's just kind of a plain bourbon, it's like, eh, there's no hurry to get it, but for 30 bucks, you can't beat it. Um, I don't know, it's just one of those places that's just so good. And to be able to find a bottle that you want for 60 bucks, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I cannot express to you in any other way. Go out and get this guy. The Elijah Craigs are great if you can get them, fantastic. Stag Jr. is just one of those things that's good luck. Maybe you'll find one, maybe you won't. You know, if you find it for 60, 50 bucks, like I, ref like I referred to in my old video, like buy all of them because you know, you'll be able to have some good trade stock there, but putting them all in this lineup, putting them all in this matchup, flat out gonna tell you, JD, go grab it, 60 bucks. I am completely surprised. A friend of mine told me about it, John Eric, if you're out there, shout out to you for this bottle. He was like, I heard it was fantastic. I heard it gives all of these a run for their money. Absolutely correct. Um, go out and get it. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Um, I appreciate you watching the show. It's the second show. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to be doing editing on this thing, I'm sure, all day, Sunday and Monday to get it out by Tuesday uh, after the holiday because we got some friends coming over. But, uh, you know, I, I'm in complete and utter shock right now. But please uh, follow the channel, like, subscribe, whatever the heck you guys do. And uh, may, your base be, may your base be rare. May your bourbon be rare. Your base be deep and your barbell heavy. I'll catch you guys the next time. Thanks.